Hey everyone, my name is Chris from Create Daily, and today I'm going to show you how to create a Johnny Hair style map animation using Adobe After Effects with no plugins. Typically, advanced map animations are done using a plugin called GeoLayers, which looks pretty epic, but I haven't used it myself yet. So for today's tutorial, we'll be using an archived imagery that I linked in the description below, so you can download and follow along. I have time codes linked below so you can skip around. Now let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is show you where I found the map for today's tutorial, and that is on the David Rumsey map collection. I found this beautiful old US map here from the 1800s. And what I really like about this map is that when I go over here to the export settings, you see I have all of these downloadable options and I'm going to select the extra, extra large. Whenever you're doing projects with digitally scanned photos or assets or maps, you always wanna get the highest resolution possible. So I will link this asset in the description so you can follow along. All right, so now let's jump into Photoshop. All right, so we are in Photoshop here and what we're gonna do is duplicate our original map layer. We're gonna label this new map no text. And we are going to zoom in here over the state of Oklahoma. And what I want to do is use some of Photoshop's generative fill AI to remove the words Indian territory. So in order to do that, I'm going to take out my marquee tool here, I'm going to highlight the entire word here, I'm going to hold shift, and I'm going to highlight this entire word right here. Simple as that. Now I'm going to go to generative fill and type in remove text. In just a matter of seconds, we'll see Photoshop's magic come to life. Boom. Just like that, the text is gone. Now, in some examples, if you wanna get really specific, what I would recommend doing is highlighting each individual letter and taking those out separately, but it's really up to you. For the sake of the tutorial, we'll stick with what we got and we'll jump into After Effects. All right, so we are in After Effects here. The first thing I'm gonna do is create our render comp. And we're gonna make this 1920 by 1080, and we're gonna leave it at 24 frames per second, and we will leave the duration 15 seconds for now. If we need to change it, we always can do that later. I'll throw that in my render comp folder. Now I have my assets here. I have my original map and then I have my map with no text. I'm gonna bring in our original map to start. And what I'm gonna do is pre-comp this. So I'm gonna right click, go to pre-comp, leave the attributes in the render comp and we're gonna label this working map comp. And as you would imagine, we are going to throw this in the working folder. So we're gonna jump into our working comp here and we'll see it is at its original scale and size, which is very large as what we saw before. And the first thing we wanna do is actually mask out our state of Oklahoma. Now, this is something I could have done in Photoshop, but I want to keep this channel more directed towards After Effects, so we're going to do it all in here. I'm going to duplicate our original map, and I'm going to take out our pen tool, and I'm going to start tracing out the outlines of the state. Now, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to go around every edge as perfectly as it would be if it were a paid project, but you're getting the point that I'm just going around real quick. All right, so here is what we have so far. So now what I wanna do is click F for feather, go up here, this looks good. Now what I wanna do is create some sort of outline to really make, to give it some separation between the state and the rest of the map itself. So we're gonna do that by adding a stroke effect. So I'm gonna to go to our Indian territory state, I'm going to add a stroke. And right away, we'll see here, we have a little bit of a white line, but we're gonna beat that up a little bit. We'll make it like, let's say six. All right, that looks pretty good. And we can change the color to anything we want. I'm gonna leave it as white, but you have that option. You can make it a red or really any color that you want. I'm just gonna leave it as white. So now what we're gonna do is actually animate the outline of the state, and this is really fun. So what I'm gonna do is click zero here and then set a stopwatch keyframe. And then we're gonna to go to about one second in, and I'm gonna bring this back up to 100, just like that. And here is what we have. Nice, this looks good. Now what I want to do is click on our keyframes here and I'm going to go to flow and I'm going to, uh, and flow is this paid plugin that I use and they have all these fun presets uh, baked in. I'm just going to use the circ uh, default preset that I like using and that's going to give it just some fun easing just like that. So here's what we have so far. It looks okay, but I th still think it could use some better separation between the state itself and the background. So we're going to add a fun shape layer and I have this gr dark gray right here. This is the hex code that I'm using in case you want to use the same exact one. I'm going to add that in here. I'm going to change the blend mode to soft light and or hard light. That looks a lot better. And now I'm going to drop the opacity to say 75. All right, now that we have our state outlined and a little bit separated from the background, now what we're going to do is create a fun call out circle to just bring more notice to the state itself. So I'm going to go to composition here, new composition. We'll label this circle call out. To start, I'm going to pull up our lips tool and I'm going to make this going to get rid of the fill. I'm going to have a stroke and I'm going to draw a circle here just like this. I'm going to align this in the center 
and I'm going to center up our anchor point. And to do that, I'm pressing Y. I have snapping turned on, as you see right here. And I'm going to just snap this right to the middle. So now everything moves, rotates, scales, all that all around this anchor point. Now I'm gonna label this stroke and I'm going to set a keyframe for scale, go to one second and set another keyframe. Then we're gonna to go to the start and make this zero. So typically when I see tutorials like this on YouTube, I come across kind of very simple circle scale animations and I just wanna show you guys something just a little bit more to help elevate your callouts. So that's what we're doing with this. So now we have this simple scale animation. Now to uh, spice this up a little bit, I'm gonna go and type in stroke and we have our stroke width here. I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna to go to one second here and then I'm going to change that to zero. So here's what we have now. So now it's continuously scaling and it's also thinning out. The stroke is also thinning out as we go. And the 12 uh, stroke start is a little too thin for me. So I'm gonna boost this up. That might be a little bit too large. We'll leave this at 60. That looks good. Now, what I wanna do is actually offset these keyframes just a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is to take our scale keyframe and I'm just gonna push that out just a little bit like that. Here's what we have. So now things are starting to thin out as it continues to grow and it's a continuous movement. So I like the way this looks, but there's still more work to be done. I'm gonna duplicate the stroke. We will label this as fill. All right, now I'm gonna go here, get rid of the stroke, leave the fill just like that. So now when I play this again, nothing looks like it's changed and that's because we need to do some offsetting and some moving around. So I'm gonna to go to our fill circle right here and I'm gonna just drop this down ever so slightly. So now you see it push out just like that. And I also want to scale these out just a little, or and then I also just wanna extend these out just a little bit more. All right, now I'm gonna highlight these and I'm gonna to go to our flow plugin and I'm going to click apply and here is what we got. Now we're going to go back to our map here and we are going to bring in our circle call, bring it to our assets folder. Now we're going to bring it in and it is right here in the middle. And I'm gonna bring this down and I'm gonna turn snapping off and just place it where I want it to be. Kind of like right here in the middle of the state. I'm gonna change the blend mode to multiply. Next thing we wanna do is create some fun lines going from all the different states to Oklahoma. I'm going to take our pen tool. I'm gonna to get rid of our fill. I'm gonna add a stroke. Let's just make it 30 for now. Change the color to white. And we're gonna start off in a state, let's just say Arizona. And I'm gonna create a point here and I'm gonna create another point right here. And right away we have this nice line. And typically when you see animations like this, once again, you see a lot of straight lines. Uh, and what I wanna do is just ant this up just a little bit. So I'm gonna click here and you see there's that little plus sign. I could actually add a curb. I could hold on alt and make that curve just like that. And then I could do the same here, get that point, bring it up just like, just like that again. So now what I actually wanna do is stylize this line. I don't want it to just be a plain boring line. I wanna make it look like it's like marching ants, like people or something traveling to the state itself. So to do that is really easy. I'm gonna go here, I'm first label this AZ because that's what we're gonna be doing a bunch of different states. And now I'm gonna to go to drop down menu, go to contents, go to shape, go to stroke, and we're gonna go down to wave. And for the amount, we're going to make this 100. We're going to change the wavelength from 100 to 50 just like that. And now it's starting to look a little bit more like circles or dots. I might change the stroke width itself to like, let's say 30. I really like the way that looks. And now what I wanna do is actually animate the phase of the animation itself, because right now I can actually change the direction of where this is going, which is really cool. So to do that, I'm gonna set a keyframe here for phase, and I'm gonna set another one for negative 80. And I'm just gonna drag this all the way to the back, just like that. And here is what we got. So now things are feeding in from one state to the other and you see it is all heading that direction. We wanna make sure it's heading into the state if that's what your objective is for, for your project. So that's what, that's what I'm trying to do here. Now what I wanna do is actually animate the line itself to go into this animation. So I'm gonna to go to add, trim paths, drop down this menu, put zero in for the end, set a keyframe, go into about a second, Set it to 100 and here's what we got. That looks good. Now what I need to do is highlight these keyframes here and I'm going to click F9 for easy ease. I'm gonna go up to my graph editor, highlight my last keyframe and I'm going to drag this handle in. And here's what that looks like. 
The last thing I want to do uh, with this line is I want to change the blend mode actually to soft light. You could cycle through a bunch, but I found soft light or even overlay. That overlay looks really nice. We're going to just leave it there. Um, I just like the way it looks. It stands out a little bit more. So the next thing we want to do is actually duplicate this process for all these other states because that's going to make the map much more interesting. So uh, in order to do that, I'm going to duplicate this first one and I'm going to just bring it up with my arrow keys and we will pull out the pen tool here and we'll say, hey, I want the starting point to be, let's say, Utah. And we're going to change the direction. We're going to go through Colorado and we'll get rid of that third point and we're going to go right through the edge of Kansas here, just like that. We'll give it just a little curve just because it looks nice. All right, and right away, now we have two lines going like that. And we wanna label it based upon the state that it's starting from just to stay organized. We're gonna do the same thing here. And we're gonna do repeat this process just a couple of times again. And uh, you'll see how this all comes to life. All right, so now we have all of our state lines coming in. And the next thing we wanna do is start offsetting some of these keyframes here because we don't want everything animating at the same time. We wanna offset these so we give our animation just a little bit more fluidity. I know that we have our state animating in first, the stroke of that. Once that animates in, I wanna have our callout circle animated. in. So I'm gonna bring that up to about 12 frames in. And now I'm going to offset these states all by about a second or so. The next thing we're going to do is actually create our ink bleed. And what we want to do is, as you remember before, we removed this text, Indian Territory. Now, the purpose of this is to start off as an Indian Territory and then change the text and the lettering of this to something else. So that is why we created that extra map. So I'm going to duplicate our Indian Territory state. I'm going to go to Map No Text. I'm going to hold down Alt. I'm going to click and drag on top. And right away, you're going to see it disappear just like that. Now what we need to do is create the ink bleed itself. So I'm going to go to assets here, composition, new composition. We will call this ink bleed reveal. All right. And I love using ink bleeds. Uh, there's tons to download online. I just want to show you guys how to make your own because I think it's a pretty fun exercise. So I'm going to create a, just a white circle here, center this up, and I'm going to put our anchor point right here in the middle, turn snapping on, boom. Okay. Now to start, what I'm going to do is set a uh, scale keyframe and I'm gonna go to about, let's say like one and a half seconds, set another one. This is what we have so far. And what we're gonna basically be doing is we're going to be revealing our new image using the white information, the luminance of the circle. So that is part of this process. So right now we have this animated circle right here and we wanna make it look just a little bit spicier because this is a little boring. So to start, we're going to add a repeater. All right, and we're going to play around with this repeater. We're going to bring our position in to let's say zero. We're going to scale things to 110 and to our end opacity, we're going to drop that to zero as well. And we'll continue to play around with the position. Um, the reason I'm doing this is because the way Luma matting works is that it takes everything that's out of the luminance or the white values. So starting with a gray, it's going to take a part of that, then a lighter gray, even more. And then the actual white, it's going to actually change everything. So this is just going to help make things look more dynamic when we are animating things in. Now this is looking good, but we, it could still be better. So, so we're going to add a turbulent displace here. So this is where things get fun and funky at the same time. We're going to change our size to let's say 650. All right, so here's what we have. It's looking a little bit better. Now, the secret is in the complexity. We're gonna make this from one to 10, and this is how that looks. So now this is a fun looking ink bleed. And there's more I can do on this. If you wanna know more, just drop a comment on the tutorial and maybe I'll do it. I'm gonna highlight both keyframes, click F9 to easy ease, and here is what we have for our ink bleed. So we're gonna go back to our map here. We are going to pull in our new ink bleed reveal. Da -da -da -da. Drop it on top. We want to make sure that this entire composition covers the entire state. So I'm just dropping down my opacity and saying, okay, where does it cover the entire perimeter? That's where it covers it. And then where is the starting point? So it starts like right here. I like that. So now what I'm going to do is take our ink bleed reveal here, and I'm going to Luma mat our map with no text on it to the mat that we just made. So I'm going to go to mat, pick whip it, then change this to luminance, just like that. And right away you start to see everything go away, which looks really cool. So this looks nice, but now we need to replace the text with something, right? So that's where uh, the power of text animation comes in. And this is one of my favorite parts of the tutorial 
because I love doing the style of text animation. We're going to write out the word Oklahoma. We are going to bring this more towards the center here. We could also adjust the spacing between the letters, also known as kerning. And we do that right here with this tool. You can just see, you know, based upon kind of some of the surrounding states and see how that looks like Kansas, it's a smaller word, but bigger state. So it's spaced out more you kind of do with that as you want. I'm just going to space this out to about here. Now we're going to do some fun text animations. So I'm going to drop things down here. Go to animate opacity. All right. And then we're going to go back up to the text and animate our blur and our blur start. We're going to start at maybe let's say like, like six, that looks good. All right. And then our opacity, we're going to start at zero. Now we're going to go down to our range selectors here and set a key from here for start for the range selector and for the, for both range selectors. I'm going to go up to about a second here. and I'm going to bring this up to 100, just like this. And we'll slide it down a little bit. So as things start to go away, we start to see our text animate on. This looks nice, but I think it could look a little bit better. So what we're going to do is actually offset our blur keyframes because right now we have just a little bit of blur and I want to see more of it. So I'm just going to take these and I'm going to just slide them down just a little bit. So now we have a little bit more blurs. Each letter is animating in, which looks really slick. I'm going to highlight these keyframes here and I'm going to click F9 to easy ease. Here's what we got. So here is what we have so far. We have our fun map animation with this call out circle, the state lines and the Luma mat taking away our original text, which looks really cool. Everything's been, everything we've been working on has been in this working map comp folder. We're actually going to go to our, our render comp now, and we're going to fit this right here. And what we're going to do is make this a 3d layer and we're going to push this back in 3d space just a little bit so we could see more of it. So now what we're going to do is animate our X and Z rotation as well as our position. And we'll start, we'll start in and we're going to just start rotating things. This is very much so a push and pull for, you know, what you're liking and what you're into or, you know, how you want your map to look. It's really completely up to you. But what I want to do is actually kind of start low and then just reveal it from one from the left side to the other. So we're going to start here and then we're going to go a couple seconds in. And if you don't like this look, you can keep animating the keyframes the way that you want your map to be revealed. But I think this is great. So this is how you make a Johnny Harris style map animation in Adobe After Effects. Let me know what you think in the comments about today's tutorial. Thanks for watching and stay creative.